Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the Q1 FY23 earnings conference call of India Pesticides Limited hosted by Dollar Capital. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Teja Sonami from Dollar Capital. Thank you and over to you, sir. On behalf of Dollar Capital, I would like to thank the management of India Pesticides Limited for giving us the opportunity to host their Q1 FY23 earnings call. From the management team, we have with us today Mr. Anand Swaroop Agarwal, Chairman, Mr. D.K. Jain, CEO, and Mr. S.P. Gupta, the CFO. Without further ado, I would like to hand over the call to the management for their opening remarks, post which we can open the floor uh, for a Q&A session. Thank you and over to you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Tejas. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you and your family are staying safe and healthy. I take the pleasure of welcoming you all for the Q1 FY23 earnings conference call of India Pesticides. I hope you all had the chance to look at the financial statements and earnings presentation uploaded on the exchanges and our website. During the quarter, our revenue grew by 27.4%, supported by increased demand of our existing products and new products launches. The ongoing global uncertainties had an impact on raw material prices during the quarter and increased energy costs. We launched first phase of our backward integration of Pritila Crow Technical of 2,000 tons per annum capacity during Q1 FY23. This will be manufactured in our existing facility at Sandila plant, which will further safeguard us from any supply chain challenge of the intermediate, which is largely imported. We are planning to expand it further in the current physical year. The primary application of this chemical is a herbicide for rice plantation. We anticipate a good ma market potential for this product. The manufacturing process was developed indigenously by our R&D and project engineering teams. This brings our total technical manufacturing capacity at Sandila to 21,400 ton per annum. We are also progressing positively towards Hamirpur facility where AI report is under completion and is expected to be submitted by August 10. At this juncture, I would like to say that we are happy to say that the groundbreaking ceremony of Hamirpur plant was done by Honorable Prime Minister Mr. Modi. Looking forward, we will continue our journey towards building long-term relationship with all our stakeholders by delivering as per everyone's expectations. We are consistently working towards our vision of supporting chemical business and farmers across the world by producing superior value chemicals by integrating quality and efficiency. Now, I will hand over the further presentation to Mr. Jain, our CEO, Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I thank you for taking out time to join the earnings call for Q1 FI23. Friends, we continued our growth journey, not only qualitatively, quantitatively, but also through product portfolio and capacity announcements. As you know, due to present day scenario, commodity prices have been affected a lot. Our team is continuously working on developing chemicals from basic stages and process for the same to reduce the impact of such situation on our ability to produce chemicals going forward. One of the prime examples is backward integration of our Petilazo technical as told by Mr. Agarwal, for which I would like to thank our R&D team 
who have worked towards developing efficient manufacturing process and execution by our in-house engineering team. Furthermore, the work for second phase is expected to commence during later part of this year. This is also a testament of our R&D capabilities and our ability to consistently find chemicals which can substitute and limit our dependence on imports. This further enhances our competitiveness in the Indian market. And also one of the many initiatives that aligns to companies' vision of Make in India and support domestic growth. Our installed capacity of technicals increased to 23,500 metric ton from 19,510 metric ton last year. Now we are targeting to further increase the capacity of at our Sandila plant by 4,000 metric ton uh, by addition of two more manufacturing blocks at the existing Sandila facility, which are proposed to be used for herbicide technical and intermediates. CapEx outflow of 70 crores as planned for FI23 is progressing well. We remain committed to deliver continuous, sustainable, long-term growth with R&D as the core leading uh, to continuous innovations in product as well as processes. For this R&D, I would like to add that we have added two more very senior scientists of India fame uh, in our team. With this, I would like to pass on to our CFO, Mr. S.P. Gupta, to walk us through our financial highlights. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you for joining the India Pesticide Conference call to discuss Q1 financial 23 results. India Pesticide margin and profitability continue to remain strong with our efficient asset utilization efficient process and raw material management. Taking you through the financial highlights, the total revenue stood at 221 crore, as against 174 crore in Q1 financial year 22. That is by your by growth of 27.4 percent. EBITDA in Q1 financial year 23 stands at 59 crore. EBITDA margin was 26.6 percent in Q1 financial year 23. The PAT stood at 41 crore in Q1 FY23 as compared to 42 crore in Q1 FY22. PAT margin was 18.5% in Q1 FY23. The revenue from export stood at 101 crore as compared to 64 crore in Q1 FY22. Domestic revenue stood at 118 crore as compared to 106 crore in Q1 FY22. Revenue from technical and formulation is stood at 170 crore and 48 crore respectively during Q1 FY23. Our distinct product offering and ability to develop client specific molecule quickly and efficiently benefits us in targeting and servicing diverse and niche range of demand internationally as well as domestically. During the quarter, we launched six molecule in Q1 FY23 and is part of our earlier announced medium term strategy of launching eight new molecules. We remain confident of continuing our growth trajectory while extending full support to our customers, suppliers, and other value stakeholders. With this, we would be happy to take your questions. Thank you. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone phone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Noel Fernandez from ULJK Financial Services. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, thank you for the opportunity. So my question was that uh, since you're increasing the capacity of technicals, I wanted to understand the demand scenario or if you could uh, guide us with the growth rate of your customers for so, uh, formulators and innovators. And are they increasing capacity? That is one. Second, uh, as a supplier, 
where does ipl stand i mean are we in the top 5 or 10 to this formulators or we just among many other suppliers and three would be uh, since we all, i believe we are all, already operating at peak capacity so post the expansion of technical capacity can we see any new client addition going ahead so this three questions from my side so taking the first question uh, we, we are adding the capacities uh, for the new molecules uh, and we see a lot of demand for these and presently these molecules are largely imported uh, very few there are very few manufacturers in india so we are increasing the capacity we are in, uh, we have included uh, that as our uh, expansion uh, model and uh, there is very good demand of these products uh, not only in india even for exports and there will be multiple uh, customers for this so there is no problem on that count uh, similarly for the second question uh, we have uh, uh, for each molecule we have got one big uh, customer and uh, rest of the rest 50% we are normally distributing among so many other customers also and uh, Uh, for the capacity expansions, uh, so we are going continuously, as uh, told by Mr. Agrawal. Uh, we have bought a new piece of land uh, of about 25 acres uh, near uh, Kanpur, and uh, this plant work is going on. The statutory clearances for this have been applied for, and we are waiting for the certificates. And uh, as soon as we get the uh, environmental clearance, we will start working on uh, that that site. so if you could uh, quantify i mean uh, on your customer and are they building any capacity or any growth rate that you could mention globally your global customers yeah, yeah we, we we are already we are always in a discussion with our customers they indicate us their increased requirements and accordingly we increase the capacity of our product uh, in the plant so we we are always in uh, relationship with them and the there is a continuous dialogue uh, between both of us got it so and you also mentioned uh, that the energy cost was uh, high so if you could uh, tell us in percentage terms on cotton cotton here yes, on your case what has happened because of this uh, shortage of the coal and gas uh, across india uh, the uh, we are though we use the green uh, fuel uh, rice husk but the price of rice has has gone up tremendously when compared to last year it is almost three times now uh, so what is the percentage increase on cotton it cotton here 200% increase and on cotton cotton value wise the amount of increase will be around 4.5 crore for this quarter got it sir and so my last question is uh, the revenue contribution from uh, new molecules for this quarter how much was it sir revenue contribution for the from the new products is around 10% sir it is around 22 crore in value terms and they are getting stabilized no so they next year it will contribute more correct right. thank you thank you reminder to all the participants to press star and want to ask a question the next question is from the line of rajesh jain from nb investments please go ahead hello am i audible yes please yes. proceed uh, sir uh, good afternoon congratulations on good set of numbers uh, kudos to and appreciate uh, convey our appreciation to the r&d team having you know coming out with uh, such a good uh, performance molecule Uh, thank you sir my uh, sir my first question is a continuation of what the earlier participant asked about the demand scenario uh, sir you have mentioned about the about the new molecules where you know these are all imported products so you are able to replace them now we are hearing a lot of news about uh, you know onset of recession in us and europe so for the existing molecules what you have already tied up are you seeing uh, any drop in demand or customers coming back under requesting you to reduce the quantity something like that 
Uh, no, sir, we are not getting any such uh, request from any of our customers across the world. Uh, on the other hand, we are getting uh, um, requests from the customers to increase the capacity. They want increased uh, requirement or the requirements are there. We are so not received any, any from any quarter, uh, from any customer, any request for reducing the supplies. That is good to know that, sir. Sir, my second is about the capacity. Now, uh, again, you mentioned that uh, for the whatever the new capacities that you are coming up, normally 50% uh, of that uh, would be allotted to a customer and the rest to the uh, the other the whatever the, you know customers yeah. you have. So, just wanted to know how fast you are able to ramp up the capacity. Let's say we did this commissioning of 2,000 metric ton capacity last quarter. That is in Q1 for uh, you know backward integration of Pratila Chlor. Uh, how yeah. fast you can run at the full capacity? Uh, sir, normally the, uh, it takes about uh, six months to seven months for us to ramp up the capacity. Uh, for, uh, if, if it is a separate block, and in the existing block it can be a little faster. And normally our model of working is that that we we put the manufacturing in module uh, way modular way, so that we can each add one more module uh, to the existing site, so that uh, it, it it is uh, executed fast and at a minimum cost. So since you already have 50% of the capacity blocked, why it is taking so much time? Is it the practical challenges or the, when you are commissioning and then running, is that is the challenges you have or is there any other issues uh, that it takes six months to ramp up? No, no, no. I am telling you, if you want to add up new capacity for okay. the existing, uh, what I told you was that for any molecule, suppose if you are putting up a plant of say 2000 tons uh, capacity, hmm. we already tie up with a, custo with a sub customer for 50% of the capacity. And rest and remaining 50%, we try to sell to other customers. It is a marketing strategy not to be dependent entirely on one customer and slightly broad base our uh, distribution. From that point of view, I am telling. I got it. But why it is taking, let's say you have uh, commissioned a new 2000 metric ton capacity last quarter, that is Q1. Yeah. Backward integration of particular floor. So how much time it will take to run at full capacity? So it, it is at a full capacity only, 2,000 ton per annum capacity. Uh, now it takes me hardly about a month or one and a half months to stabilize the plant. Okay, so it may vary from product to product. And uh, you know what you are yeah. saying is uh, for some products, it may take up to six months to run at the full capacity, correct? No, 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 sir. We have this recent calculation. To run up to the full capacity, we don't yeah. require six months of time. It is only the stabilization of the plant for a, a month or two months maximum. Yeah. But if we want to increase the capacity by adding one more block, mm -hmm. right? so to add that block, you have to construct the plant. So that yeah. may take six months. That's what I am saying. Okay, so that means whatever new capacity we were added in FI22 plus in the last quarter, all of these are running at full capacity. Yeah, yeah. Okay, that is true. Sir. Okay, fair enough. Sir, in the last call, you had mentioned that this uh, new 2000 metric uh, ton capacity would be added by this month, that is August. But now you, I think you are giving some revised time schedules. So could you guide us for this 2000 metric ton plus another 2000? That is, you were to commission 4000 metric ton during the current year. What are the revised timelines for that, sir? So, 2000 for this 30 lakh load we have already commissioned. Uh, that is already in production. Okay. And another 2000 we have planned. That is what we will do this fiscal, this financial year we will plan. Uh, we will see the market uh, another three, four months and then we will start working on that. So, for the remaining nine months you will be adding only 2000 only, not 4000. No, so there is some confusion. And for the remaining year, we have got two more products apart Correct. from Petita Clone. Okay. There are two more products which we are adding, and the blocks for these uh, are under construction, which okay. we will be adding. One we will be adding most probably by next month, and another one we will be adding say by January. Okay. Now, what would be the capacity of these blocks? 
it, it will be 4000 tons ah that's what i was saying so what you are saying is 12000 would commission by september and the other would be january 23 correct Yes, 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 yes. Uh, uh, in this also, let us hope by FY24, these blocks also will start running at the full capacity. Exactly, that's okay. true. Okay, sir. Other than these, whatever the capacities you have mentioned now, do yeah. are we ha do we have any plan to come up with multi-purpose plant at Sandila itself? A multi-purpose plant, sir. We 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 want to have a small multi-purpose plant, but uh, we don't recommend uh, very much for this because of the contamination issues we may get later on. What happens that in multi-purpose plant, uh, uh, presently what we have is all dedicated plants. Okay. We don't produce uh, in one block uh, with the same equipment uh, two products. They okay. are all dedicated. Okay. But we have a small uh, multi-purpose, uh, say, semi-commercial pallet plant. Uh, okay. And that's what we want to, uh, we are under, that is under construction. Uh, mm. There we can have uh, some niche products with small, very small volumes. Uh, mm. th th that can be produced uh, in that multi-purpose plant. So what you are trying to inform us is that uh, this... Mr. Shah, sorry, I'm Mr. sorry to interrupt. There are many yeah. other participants in the queue. Fine. I would request you to rejoin the queue. Thank you. Thank you. For the follow-up questions. The next question is from the line of De Deepak Podar from Safar Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, um, thank you very much uh, uh, for the opportunity. So I just wanted to Mr. understand... Mr. Podar, I would request you to increase your volume a little bit. Your audio is too low. Now it's better? Yes. Okay. Uh, sir, I just wanted to understand now you mentioned in your opening remark we, we were confident to continue our growth trajectory. Um, uh, so, so the trajectory we are looking at is it 25-30% revenue growth that's what we are looking at going forward? Yes, sir. That's what we have already indicated even during our last call mm -hmm. that we, are, we would like to increase at most at the rate of 25%, 20 to 25%. Okay. And, and, and at what margin? The margins are now, uh, the present margins will continue more or less. Maybe one or two points here and there, but more or less in the same range. Okay, okay. And this growth will largely be driven by this uh, two new products that we are adding, right? Uh, 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 two more products this year at the existing site. Uh, and as I told earlier that we have got a new site, the work is going on on that new site also. So uh, we would be adding new products uh, at our new site at Hamidpur. Okay, so so that's a hundred crore project, right? Yeah, yeah, and that will be a hundred percent subsidiary by name service specialties. And, and by when this new site is expected to come on? Uh, sir, we have already adopted the land, and uh, the environmental clearance application has been made, and uh, we expect to get the clearance uh, by October November. So that we can start the working. In the meanwhile, uh, we are working on the other statutory requirements like groundwater uh, clearance, soil sampling, the contour mapping. All those things uh, are under progress, yeah, and shortlisted uh, short the product. Uh, and we are already shortlisted uh, the product which we want to put up uh, at our new site. Okay, so so if we expect, uh, assuming that it, we get the clearance by this November, December, uh, so so what's, yeah. what's the time lag from then uh, to the actual commissioning? Uh, sir, it will be almost about uh, one year, so we should expect uh, some revenue from uh, the new site in uh, this uh, FI24 uh, third to fourth quarter. Okay, fair enough. I understood. Yep, that's it from my side. All the very best, sir. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Alicia Mahavla from Invasion Capital. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. Good afternoon. Thank you for taking my question. So just wanted to understand, um, in the Sandilal Capex that we're doing of 70 crores, this is the 2,000 that has already come on stream and another 4,000 that will come um, in two phases. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah, correct. Okay. And uh, we are expecting all of this to be utilized within this year only. Yeah, we will, we, the, the, these capacities will get commissioned and the full utilization will come in the next year. Okay. So this growth of 20-25% that you are talking about, is that for 23-24 or are we saying over 2-3 years it is the growth we are targeting? 
No, no, we are growth, we are targeting, madam, for the coming three, four years, five years. Because uh, this site now is more or less full with these additional capacities of 4,000 tons. Our Sandila site will uh, be fully occupied. So we already have started, uh, we, as uh, mentioned earlier, uh, we have a new site uh, near uh, in Amirpur and we would be working on that. And there we are expecting a capex of 100 to 125 crores per year for the coming 3 4 years. For the capex we've done at Sandilal, what is the kind of uh, asset turn we're expecting over there against the 70 crores? Uh, asset turnover normally uh, between around 2.25 to 2.5 times. Okay. And you mentioned that we're expecting margins to uh, sustain at current levels. So obviously Q1 is impacted because of high raw material costs. So are we expecting it to be in this 26-27% range or 30% that we did in 22? We are projecting margin of 26 to 27 percent currently. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Anyone who wishes to ask a question, I press star in one now. The next question is from the line of Ayush Mittal from Mittal Analytics. Please go ahead. Uh, good afternoon, sir. Am I audible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, sir, so first of all, congratulations to the whole management for a, a great track record and performance. It's uh, great to see the numbers that we have been posting. Uh, so I have two questions. So one, as we understand about the company, we have done so well because we had few products in which we are the leaders. In some of the products, we are perhaps uh, just two, three players in India. And now we are increasing the product basket. So what I would want to understand is that the new products that we are bringing, uh, what has been our experience given our uh, past of very good margins, profitability, growth margins? Now, when you are bringing new product, what has been your experience and uh, how is the uptake taking place in these? So, in the new products, what we have launched uh, in the recent past, uh, some of them are uh, for export only and some of them are more for domestic market. And in domestic market, also, there are very few manufacturers of these. There are few who were making only from the last stage uh, manufacturing, that's called N-1. But we are trying to uh, integrate this to a basic stage. So we would be certainly at an advantageous position when compared to others. And our R&D team has done that work very successfully. And as informed, uh, we have already launched one intermediate, uh, which was largely by being imported. So we have started manufacturing in India now. Okay, and in these new products, we are able to get similar gross margins of around 50% uh, uh, plus, and we can maintain uh, the same profitability as we uh, bring more new products, incremental. So, though we, 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 we try to make as much as possible, our normal criteria is that the raw material cost should not be more than 50%, and mm -hmm. uh, up till now, we have been able to maintain that. And let, then we will also try to do that, but in some cases it may slightly reduce depending upon the overall cost scenario. But broadly it is in line with what we have been doing in past. Yeah, up till now it is more or less in this line what we have been doing. Okay. And the so second question is that uh, the new large greenfield expansion that we are planning, Haripur, in that as it's a very large capacity that we will be bringing, how do we plan to utilize it? Will it be a mix of the older products that we have or we have to bring uh, lots of new products to uh, utilize this new capacity? What is the thought plan? Also, um, uh, if you can highlight, like when we put a new product, new capacity, I think the profitability would be dependent on scalability and as we go forward. But how do you maintain your profitability when you bring new products? Uh, no, sir, that's what I am uh, telling you because uh, when we discuss with our customers and we do the initial costing, we see that the raw material cost uh, in which should not be more than 50%. So it should be around 50%, 50, 55, 45 in that range. If, we, if it is in that range, then we are confident that we will be able to maintain our margins. And uh, if we don't find the, part, uh, the product uh, to be in that range and it is very much off from that point, then we don't take up that product at all. And uh, we have already shortlisted a few of the products for our uh, Amirpur site 
uh, with this uh, criteria. And as uh, your, uh, to your earlier question, uh, we are planning to add uh, some other new molecules rather than expanding our own molecules because we have enough capacity here now. And if there is some more capacity requirement is there, then we may think over. But presently, we have thought of uh, a new product there. That's very useful. Thank you and wish you all the best. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ayurji. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Krishan Parvani from GM Financials. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, sir. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. I actually have only one question. So just wanted to check uh, what was the overall capacity and utilization during this quarter, last quarter, and uh, in 1KFI22. The capacity utilization this quarter was around 80%. And what was the capacity? Because I think uh, there was some confusion. Earlier in the remarks, it was uh, highlighted that it was around 24,000. But then uh, I think it was said that 23,500. So what was the overall capacity this quarter? It was 23,500 tons. At the end of the quarter, and capacity utilization is around 80 percent. Okay, and can you give the similar number for the last quarter? The our volume actually increased by 21 percent this quarter. So earlier the capacity utilization was around 65 percent. No, yeah, around 82, 83. No, no, currently in earlier quarter, 2122. So, okay, so are you, you're giving the YOI number. So basically, 28% YOI sales growth out of which 21% is on account of volume. Is it correct? Yeah, yeah, very good. Okay, 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 perfect. Uh, thanks. That was the only question I had. Thank you so much. Thank you. The next okay. question is from the line of Bhavin Cheda from Inam Holdings Private Limited. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, good afternoon, sir. Uh, overall good set of uh, numbers uh, despite challenging environment. And uh, congratulations to the entire team and R&D team for the continuous new product launches. A uh, few questions. Uh, first, you mentioned sir, new products contributed uh, 22 crores or 10% of sales. So is it that uh, you mean this six molecules? I think overall out of eight molecules now, six have been launched. So when you say new products, which means this six molecules? Yeah, yeah, six molecules, yes. Okay. Uh, second question uh, 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 was on the order book, if you can uh, uh, give, what's the current situation of order book, mainly pro-sulfo-carb and uh, uh, pretalacor? So we, we, we have got uh, very good order book, sir. We, we are uh, having the orders for the next uh, five to six months. Okay, next five to six months. Uh, this uh, so, so basically this fiscal you are seeing good good amount of overall growth in uh, pro yeah, yeah, in, in, in pro sulfo carb we have got in, in Petrina Growth, we are already in discussion with one of the customers uh, who has given us a, 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 a what I call to say a forecast eh, for the coming one year. Right. And the firm model will come as soon as uh, they, they finalize it, but they have given us a forecast. Sure. And so your old products like Kaptan and uh, Folfate, which used to contribute substantial uh, part of your business and actually did very well in FI22 also, though I think FI21, the numbers were low there. So how, how are that old products doing? Are you seeing growth there or uh, have they achieved uh, maturity stage? So there also there is a increased demand for these molecules also, sir. Okay, so that products are also overall uh, doing very yeah, well. Yeah, they are all about, yes. Okay, and uh, what is the current uh, gross debt and cash in the balance sheet as on June 30? Cash in balance cash, okay. is, cash in, uh, net cash is around 105 crore. Net uh, cash is 105 crore. Debt of around 20 crore and uh, FD and bank balance of around 125 crore. So net cash is around 105 crore. So your net cash has gone up from the March level of 93 crores. 
Yeah, yeah, right? slightly. Right. Okay. And how much capex you did in this quarter? Uh, we spent around uh, 17 crore this quarter. Our total capex for the year is 70 crore. So we spent uh, 17 crore. This is and 70 is at Sandila. You will spend something at Hamirpur also, right, sir? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hamirpur. We will. So that would be over and above the 70 and, crores. Uh, in addition to this 70 crore, we will be spending for Hamirpur also. That But, is 10 uh, crores, or should be more? Uh, pardon? That would be more than 10 crores, Hamirpur, or uh, should be around that number is fine. we are planning to spend around 20 crore in this fiscal on hamirpur plan ah in this fiscal on hamirpur plan okay thank you sir and best of luck yeah okay. thank you sir thank you the next question is on the line of yogesh tiwari from arihant capital market please go ahead thank you sir for taking my question sir tiwari uh, we cannot hear you kindly uh, increase your volume little bit uh, am i clear now your your audio is clear sir so your audio is too low we cannot hear you properly uh, just a moment hello am i clear now sir your audio is still low i would request you to use your handset yeah i'll just try hello please proceed yes uh, so my first question is on gross margin so we were about 50% in this quarter so given the decline in commodity prices uh, is the uh, 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 can we expect uh, gross margin to improve from here and are we taking any price increase going forward we since the commodity prices are uh, now slightly declined not much So, so we cannot increase the prices since everyone is aware that they are on slightly on declining trend. So uh, the margins, uh, like uh, the gross margins and uh, beta margins, would be like fifty percent and twenty six, twenty seven percent also going forward. Yes, yes, it, it will be in that range only. Okay, and my second question is on uh, the delayed monsoon. So. Did you see any impact of the delayed monsoon, and uh, will we pick up in Q2? Not much, actually. Our formulation sale is contributing only 22 percent of our entire turnover. So we have uh, some inventory built up at the end of this quarter. But since the contribution of formulation is low, so we were not impacted much. Okay, so what I understand is like uh, there was no impact of uh, the delayed monsoon in Q1. No, it will be, but it 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 will not be material. Okay, okay, got it. And uh, lastly, on the export demand, so uh, if you can uh, know uh, share some uh, details on it, uh, from where is the demand coming? Which uh, regions is uh, driving the demand for export and? How will uh, FI23 and uh, no, growth rate will be in the export business? We are getting still export demand uh, from Europe as well as from Australia and uh, other places, and we see a very good, the uh, robust uh, numbers from them. So this 2025 percent uh, revenue growth, uh, which uh, you know we are targeting. It's like uh, export would be, uh, export growth will be more than this 20-25 percent uh, growth. Export growth also will be in commensurate. It is because now we are having a mix of products. Where some of them are more for domestic use and some of them are for export. So it is going in a mixed way. Okay, sure. Thank you, sir. That's all from my side. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of. Gagan Tareja from Ask Investment Managers, please go ahead. Yeah, uh, am I audible? Am I audible? Yes, you are audible. Yeah, uh, thank you for taking my question, sir. Uh, the first question is uh, on the other expenses for the quarter, which are up forty-seven percent year on year from one one Q of FY twenty-two. Uh, if you could, uh, you know, give us 
सम मोर डिटेल्स ऑफ वॉट हैज बीन द कॉज फॉर दैट एंड ब्रेक इट डाउन इन टू कॉस्ट हेड्स गगन जी अपर वॉल्यूम हैज इंक्रीज बाई ट्वेंटी वन परसेंट ऑन बायो बाई बेसिस सो द वेरिएबल कॉस्ट हैज ऑल्सो इंक्रीज एंड द सेकेंड मेन रीजन वाज द इंक्रीज इन अवर फ्यूल कॉस्ट हैज ऑलरेडी एक्सप्लेन इट हैज गॉन अप बाई थ्री टाइम्स सो इट हैज कंट्रीब्यूटेड अराउंड फोर पॉइंट फाइव करोड फॉर वन क्वार्टर एंड सिंस वॉल्यूम हैज इंक्रीज सो द other expenses have also increased proportionately so that 4.5 crores uh, you know you're talking about material cost is actually not not sitting in the in the cost of goods sold but in the other expenses right other expenses it is under power and fuel it, it is clubbed under other expenses okay okay uh uh any any other uh, uh, cost head you know uh, you also mentioned that uh, power and utility costs have gone up if you could give us some idea how much uh, you know there has been an increase in other expenses because of that me i already told you the uh, the power and fuel cost has gone up by 1.5 crore per month it is 4.5 crore and it is included in other expenses incremental amount is 4.5 crore so this this is inclusive of the cost of rice husk which has gone up but also uh, the cost of uh, uh, electrical utilities and uh, you know other uh, uh, power and utility consumables all put together you are saying the cost actually power cost has not gone up okay but the power but it is but it is uh, commensurate with the increase in volume as the volume has increased the overall power cost has gone up but per unit the power has not gone up but the uh, rice has price has gone up so that is the one of the major contributors of the increase in the other expenses no i i get your point sir what i'm saying is that even if your volume growth is 20% and i increase my other expenses of 1 q last year by 20% i arrived at a 36 crore number from 30 crore right so over and above that you know there have been uh, other increases also right so the increase what i'm simply saying that 14 and a half crore increase that we see in other expenses is actually in excess of sales growth or volume growth right so volume growth will explain 6 crore 4 4 and a half crore will be explained by you know the rice has cost so that's around 10 10 and a half crore and there is 4 crore more left right so what uh, what what has that been due to it will be see we have also recruited more persons so you will also find our labor charges uh, has also gone up slightly slightly uh, freight has also gone up as compared to last year but these are minor items say 50 lakh to 1 crore incremental it has gone up so there are multiple component of 3 and 1/2 crore which you are referring but labor cost here, i mean would would sit in the staff cost and not in other expenses right no see our employee expenses is separate head but uh, the labor and processing charge Since we have been employing a lot of contractual labor, they have uh, their number has gone up significantly due to our production increase. So it is uh, covered under other expenses. Okay, I, I get it, sir. And uh, if you could give some idea on the net working capital position, inventories, receivables, payables, you know, how do they stand compared to uh, you know the same time last year? Yeah, as compared to last year our uh, net working capital cycle has gone up slightly but uh, it is on the same footing as compared to uh, last quarter mm-hmm. our uh, as, as compared to our last quarter of march our uh, uh, receivable days has gone down by 15 days but our inventory has gone up by 10 to 11 days and our creditors has also reduced by 5 days So net net as compared to March 22, our uh, net working capital cycle is on same level. Okay, 
I get it, sir. Uh, also, you know, you uh, you have launched eight products, and uh, I, I mean, they are they are yet contributing, you know, in 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 a very small measure to your total top line. Uh, one, uh, I would like to understand what's the what's the you know optimal or peak sales potential that you see from these eight products and uh, uh, second uh, would would the current capacity that you have at sandila plus whatever expansion of 4000 tons you're planning be able to uh, take care of of the 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 requirements of of these products as they scale up sir we have from the eight molecules what we have promised during the time of ipo we have launched up till now six molecules yes. five technicals and one intermediate yeah and uh, two more would be launched uh, uh, during the remaining uh, part of the fiscal year no i get that sir my question is they are as as you mentioned they are contributing i mean their contribution to sales is 10 percent that is around 20 yeah. 22 crore uh, for for the quarter my question was one what is the peak sales potentials of these molecules you know you 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 will be signing a contract for uh uh pretty love floor in the you know in, in the coming quarter or or the other molecules will scale up. Yeah. So what could be the peak sales potential for these six or eight molecules? When do you see yourself achieving that peak sales potential? And third, is your Sandila capacity uh, adequately going to be able to take care of those requirements? Yeah, our Sandila facility will take care of these uh, increased capacities. And uh, peak sale, uh, we expect uh, to be in the range of uh, asset turnover of about 2.5 times. So roughly, we have spent 70 crores last year, and 70 crores we would be spending this year. So we, we expect uh, the sale uh, volume to be around that. From the new products? Yes, sir. Okay. And if I go back to, uh, you know, your commentary from from the previous quarter, uh, when you, uh, Q4 of, of, of last year, on margin you had been indicating 26 to 29 percent, while it was a broad sort of a band, now you have narrowed it down to 26 to 27 percent. So gradually over the last few quarters, you know, that margin guidance has been Sort of trimmed initially from 30 percent to you know down to 26 to 29 and now 26 to 27 while it's understandable that under the current you know volatility in in, in input prices it's it's hard to it's hard to sort of uh, zero in on a particular number but presuming you know in a in a normalized scenario when when you are not faced with uh, this sort of volatility, what is uh, going to be a stable sort of margin for you? Yes, that is what we expect. This is 26 to 27 percent of what we have already said. We expect that this will be maintained. And uh, you are every the whole industry has seen uh, a lot of volatility in the uh, raw material prices, in the overall uh, inflation. Uh, and the manpower cost, as well as uh, the fuel cost, and so many things. There are so many variables. That is why there has been uh, change in the overall uh, margins. But we expect that once the things stabilize, we should be able to maintain as the, in this range. You're saying that even after normalization, your margins will now remain at a 26, 27% trajectory rather than. But now, because we are adding few more new molecules, no, sir, the new molecules, uh, uh, there is some a, a certain degree of uncertainty would be there, isn't it? So uh, we will try to get to as much as possible, but we feel that uh, at least we should be able to maintain this range. So is it a question of you being able to optimize on your yields, uh, uh, you know, which will build up efficiency subsequently, and therefore there might be uh, possibly be better margins as as you scale up uh, the yields on on these products as volumes 
as the production goes up slow sir whatever as we start producing the plant gets slowly stabilized and uh, the the R&D team still they want they keep on working so there is always scope of uh, betterment uh, of the yield okay i understand and our team is already working on and and all this additional 4000 ton capacity uh, uh, you will be able to fully utilize by the end of fy23 and sandila you are say, uh, sorry hamirpur you are saying you know becomes operational only towards the uh, last quarter of fy24 so in the interim 9 months uh, would you be i mean would 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 there be a, a sort of a limitation on growth because of uh, capacity hitting a ceiling and you know before the hamirpur uh, plant comes on board and starts contributing sir this 4000 ton capacity what we are going to be adding in the remaining part of this year that will get slowly stabilized during the first part of uh, fy24 because that fully will not be we will not be able to utilize so that we would be utilizing the effect of that uh, fully we will be getting in fy24 and uh, in fy24 then there will be a continuity uh, as we would be working on uh, our hamirpur site and we expect that the hamirpur site the second half of fy24 we should start getting some results from there so there will be a continuity thanks sir I- i'll get back in the queue thanks for taking my questions and all the best to you thank you thank you so much thank you the next question is from the line of rohit nagraj from centrum broking limited please go ahead uh thanks for the opportunity uh, so first question is uh, what are our three uh, key raw materials and how has been the trend uh, in the recent past for them the key raw materials are the basic raw materials like chlorine carbon disulfide sulfuric acid alkali these are the basic uh, raw material plus all indie every product has its own specific raw materials uh, some of them are sourced from india some of them are sourced from outside india all right uh, how has been the trend in carbon disulfide prices carbon dioxide prices have gone up uh, very severely sir in the last one year uh, almost uh, two and a half times and uh, now they they are getting stabilized right uh, so uh, out of the formulations business uh, the entire 100% formulations is domestic or do we export also no we do export a small part of our formulated products that uh, we export and there is the the technicals what we make so we make the bulk formulations for these and export right. so there is a small part of the total uh, formulation sale right and uh, what will be the total number of molecules including the six new molecules now pardon Uh, what will be the total number of molecules, including the six molecules that we have launched in last uh, one and a half years? Total number of molecules, uh, I think fourteen. We should count that. <laughs> It must be fourteen. Right, right, right. Uh, and just one last clarification. So in FY twenty one, we did a top line of about six fifty crores. and yes. fy 22 23 will be investing uh, close to about 140 crores as you mentioned and that will be asset turnover of uh, say 2 and a half x so effectively uh, can we expect from the existing facilities will be able to generate revenues of almost uh, 1000 crores uh, by fy 24 yes sir yes sir there is no problem no Sure, sure. Uh, thank you so much for answering all the questions and best of luck, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Santan Kumar from Joint Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, sir. Uh, am I audible? Yes. Yeah. Please proceed. Uh, 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 in the last con call, the managers highlighted that one of the herbicide product has an uh, inventory issue in Australia. so i just want to know what is the status on the product and what is the revenue contribution from the product in q1 fy23 no the situation has improved now 
the situation has improved on now and we are getting continuous uh, orders uh, for that product so there any contribution in q1 in q1 contribution uh, will be around 15% of total total revenue total revenue okay sir okay sir that's it for me sir thank you thank you the next question is from the line of yoganch jaiswani from metal analytics please go ahead thanks for the opportunity sir uh, congratulations on a good set of numbers sir uh, could you throw some light on the uh, growth that we are seeing in our old products like polpet kaftan and prosulfo cup in terms of globally what is the growth in these products So globally, there is uh, growth uh, in the fungicides uh, market because some of the fungicides are getting uh, banned, especially in Europe. So these these molecules are finding uh, as an alternative uh, to the banned products. So there is an increased demand from our customers uh, to supply more of these, and we see in the in the coming years also. Slowly, the volume would increase. Okay, and sir, uh, for example, in prosulfocarb, I think uh, that is one of our key products, and we also have a dominant market share in that. So, are we also seeing any more competition coming in uh, in these products, or do we see that this market is pretty secure and we are increasing our market share? And also, if you could quantify this, that would be very helpful. Uh, sir, actually, the, the, we were the only manufacturer up till now, and we understand that uh, one more company has started making this, uh, but it, it, it is in a very small way. It is not; it, it did not affect our uh, marketing setup. Okay. So, uh, and typically, what is the growth rate that we have seen for sulfur carbon last, uh, say, three or four years, and what do we expect in next? Two three years, sir. Uh, sir, the the the, uh, the growth rate uh, exactly is very difficult to tell. But uh, we can understand that two years back there was good demand. Last year there was some overstocking of the material in uh, that country, and now this uh, problem is resolved. So we feel that it will be a constant business for us. got it sir and sir uh, in terms of the new six molecules that we mentioned have contributed 20 22 crores so uh, are all the major registrations and approvals in place for all the major markets that we intend to sell it or there are still few registrations which are yet to come in and probably we'll see a bigger scale up once those registrations come in yeah i know sir some registrations we have received and some registrations are in progress so we 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 would feel uh, increased volumes uh, in the coming years okay so sir uh, what is our expectation of uh, contribution in the fy23 from these new products by year end by year end uh, i think it should uh, contribute uh, at least uh, 100 crores okay Understood. And sir, last question from my end. Uh, on the pyrethroid side, if you could just give us a brief uh, update on how is the demand and the pricing scenario at the moment. In past, I think pyrethroid did quite well, and now I think there is some. Uh, uh, I think you could share some uh, thought from your side. That would be really helpful. So we we are not in pyrethroid uh, group of uh, products. Okay, not even in formulation side, sir. So formulation, we sell very small quantities from bought out uh, chemicals, and we make a few brands uh, in that. That is very, very, very small. Okay, uh, thanks for the clarification, sir. Thank you, and all the best. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. That was the last question that the management could take today. I would now like to hand the conference over to Mr. T K Jain. Chief Executive Officer for closing comments. Thank, thank you very much for taking out your valuable time and uh, giving us uh, opportunity to explain the situation of our uh, operations. And if you have any more questions, you are free to contact us, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you once again. 
On behalf of Dolat Capital, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines. Thank you. Thank you.